And it's not just Catholics who are worried about that new Obama policy on contraception. The Lutheran Church Missouri Synod points out that some of those contraceptives actually, quote, kill unborn children. Its president, Reverend Matthew Harrison, released a statement saying, increasingly we are suffering overzealous government intrusions into what is the realm of traditional and biblical Christian conscience. We believe this is a violation of our First Amendment rights. And joining us now with more is Jordan Seculo of the American Center for Law and Justice. Jordan, we've got lots to talk about. Church-affiliated groups say the Obama policy is a violation of their religious freedom. Do they have a case? Absolutely. I mean, this is a target right at Catholics. We have had conscience clause exceptions since the passage of Roe versus Wade. The court realized if we're going to legalize the abortion procedure, we're also going to allow these conscience protections. And no one has directly targeted this. No administration, no laws. And we, this was done not through an act of Congress, but through administrative order, which was what our whole concern of Obamacare was, to give so much power to the Health and Human Services Secretary. And Kathleen Sebelius happens to be a huge abortion rights supporter, very close to NARAL and Planned Parenthood. This is a whole, it's a huge religious freedom issue, and I want everyone to understand, and kind of our theme at the America's Center for Law and Justice the last few days, we're all Catholics right now, because if this happens to the Catholic Church and you say, well, this may not affect me so much and it's not a big deal because I don't have all the beliefs on things like uh, contraception or birth control, they will go after us next on something else. And if they can get away with it this time, they will start pushing more and more until the, it's the federal government or the highway. And that means the hospitals, the even a soup kitchen would not be able to operate or they'd have to violate their religious tenets to do so. Yeah. Earlier, we reported on the Ninth Circuit Court's decision striking down Proposition 8. How is it possible voters' rights in the state of California can be ignored like this? You know, it was a very interesting decision. 2-1 at the uh, Ninth Circuit Court of Appeals. They can appeal this en banc to the whole court. They can ask for a stay. They can also appeal directly to the U.S. Supreme Court uh, in 90 days. Here's what is at stake, really. California had basically civil, uh, civil union laws. And that ended up hurting the argument the most. What the judges said at the Ninth Circuit was, if the state already grants all of the rights of marriage to same-sex couples, then they, the state has no legitimate interest in not giving them the dignity of the title of that, You know, the dignity of having the word marriage associated with that. So because of civil union laws in California, they now said you have to allow it to be called marriage. So basically marriage just is the nice title and they get it because you already have given them all the rights. So under the 14th Amendment and equal protection, you can't give them every other right and then say, but you can't use the title marriage. So it has a direct effect in the Ninth Circuit on any states that have civil union laws. Mm -hmm. And certainly, uh, you know, President Obama said he doesn't support gay marriage, but the civil union laws he does support. Right. It's the kind of reasoning that you could see how, if it, there are states across the country that have that, that goes directly to if the constitutional interpretation of saying, then you must allow gay marriage at the state level. So it could get to the U.S. Supreme Court and certainly a shot across the bow to everybody who says, well, civil unions are fine because that's not marriage and it won't be. They just said that is exactly why it gets to be called marriage. Another interesting case, the Freedom From Religion Foundation is suing the U.S. Forest Service over its decision to let a statue of Jesus remain on federal land. Now, recently, you had a debate with that co-founder on Fox News. She said something pretty amazing about it. We don't have time to hear it, but Jordan, real quick, where's Moses? <laughs> yeah, right. So Freedom From Religion Foundation, you think they'd know about the you know, U.S. Supreme Court and making statements live on television. We were, had the debate, and we won the G Jesus statue issue that they fought at, at the petition level, administrative level. Now they've got their court challenged. We're confident about that. And then the founder of an organization which goes after religious monuments all over, everywhere they can find one, says whether well, on TV with me that uh, mm -hmm. there's no Moses in the Supreme Court after <laughs> I'd said that. Four times, once in the courtroom, okay. once on the freeze, and twice in the Great Hall. And we actually documented it all, aclj.org with photos. Good and deal. people can watch the clip too. All right. We'll be watching and looking for that. Thank you so much as always, George. Thank you.